once again, I'd like to thank everyone for joining in today. Welcome to our Intro to Online Advertising webinar. My name is Joshua Brown. I'm just going to go over a couple of housekeeping rules with you. Uh, you all will be muted. If and if you can, please remember to remute to remove uh, to mute your mics. That way, there's no interruptions going on. If you have a question, please submit it in the chat, and Christy will stop us as we go along the way to answer your questions that you have as they arise. Your host for today will be me and Kenley, and I'm just going to go ahead and jump into the webinar. Once again, the title is Intro to Online Advertising. Who is Josh? I am one of your co-hosts for today. I'm a marketing consultant for BIS Designs. And we stay between the territory of Gulfport, Mississippi and Gulf Breeze, Mississippi. We love this Gulf Coast, and we want to make sure that we're taking care of all of your business needs. I'm a native of Baldwin County, Alabama. I graduated from the University of South Alabama, majoring in marketing and a minor in business management. And I also do a lot of volunteer and community advocacy. I, I love working in the community, love working with the kids, uh, love seeing smiles on their faces and just helping other people within my community. My co-host for the day is Ms. Kenley Sweet. She is the social manager, social media manager uh, for BIS Design, she provides some effective digital, digital marketing strategy for local businesses across the Gulf Coast. She uh, manages over 20 social media accounts for the Gulf Coast. She's previously managed over 50 social media accounts over the Gulf Coast. And she's also studied communications and marketing at the University of South Alabama. Kelly, would you like to speak to everyone and say hello? Yes, hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today. All right, so me and Kenley will be your hosts for today and we're going to go ahead and jump into the intro to online marketing. And the first question that comes to everyone's mind is, who is your target market? That should be the first question to jump to your mind of who are you trying to target online for your business? And these my, my biggest tip is who are the ones that are coming into your store? Who are the ones that are calling your phone or sending uh, emails to you in, in, about interest in your business? You know, you can find these people via social media or via online through their interests. You can, we can dwindle down through demographics and geographic location. And once again, you know, these are the people that you already know for those who are established business. These are the people that are already investing into your business today. Kenley, would you like to also give some input? I know we're going to go into it more and more detail. Yes. yes. Um, if you could, um, everybody could pause for just one minute. We are going to go ahead and mute everyone else's mic so that it's nice and clear. So if you could just hang tight with us for one second, that would be great. Thank you. Okay, I think we are good to go. So what we were talking about was your target market. So um, really the biggest starting point when you think about online advertising is who's your target market? You have to define that. Now most businesses um, do already have their target market defined. Um, they look at their current customers, who's their their go-to client, who's their perfect customer, what's the age, um, what's their interest, and lots of businesses already have that um, defined, but for the ones that are smaller, maybe they just started, um, a great place to start and a great tip is if you already are developing an online presence with social media, you can actually use, um, for instance, Facebook analytics and data from your Facebook um, business page to see who your followers are. It'll tell you what age range, um, male, female, and you can kind of use that as a starting point for the businesses that may not um, already know their target market. Yes. And 
And then we go into the question of why do we need to advertise? Why do you as a business owner need to advertise your business? Why do you need to know about your target market? It's because on a, on a statistics that was pulled in 2018, 53% of businesses advertise on social media. The average Facebook user in the U.S. clicks on about eight ads per month. And just think about that. That was uh, nearly two years ago. And here we are in a pandemic. How many people are advertising on social media now? How many people are clicking on Facebook ads now? As you see over to the right, it says 61% of companies invest in social media marketing. Once again, this statistics were pulled back in 2018. So here we are in 2020 and on the hopefully on the outcome, you know, on the other side of a pandemic, how many people are sitting at home looking into their phones, looking at Facebook, looking at Instagram, how many people are surfing the net who have this free time and looking for businesses to invest in uh, places to go to eat, places to go to shop, places to go to have fun places to go to take pictures or any other activities. Th this is why you need to advertise online. Go develop that di digital presence. And if, if you are a good return on investment. Next, we're about to go into the different types of online marketing. One type is social media ads, which is where I was talking about the Facebook and the Instagram having those ads on social media or Pinterest or TikTok or YouTube. There's also the pay-per-click, the PPC, which, which is now best known as for Google ads. Then you have your remarketing. This is, for example, if you know you have something on your website, uh, uh, a sale on a shirt, and then you go on Facebook. I go on Facebook and I see that same shirt targeting me. That is called remarketing. Affiliate marketing, having someone be an influencer and selling my products. And then there's also local service. And over the case, over the course of this. Uh, webinar, we will go into each one of these online advertising. Kelly, did you want to add something in for these five categories? Nope. I think we'll touch on a lot, um, a lot oh, of the yeah. details throughout the throughout the webinar. Okay, so the networks, and this is going into uh, the social media marketing directly, and then a lot of remarketing and so forth. The networks. There's Facebook with 2.3 billion monthly users. There's Twitter, as you see, with 326 month, million monthly users. LinkedIn, which is growing quite fast. <laughs> now they've come up with a lot of updates and a lot of ways to really target people digitally. So LinkedIn with 500 million members, Pinterest with 250 million. And the majority of Pinterest users are, are women. So if you have products such, you know, retail products or home decor, even though I love home decor myself, yeah, the majority of women are on, on Pinterest. So if, you, if that's your target market, these are the insights that you need to take into calculation as you begin to develop your marketing strategy. And then there's Instagram, which is, I think, the third highest. Then there's Snapchat, where a lot of the 18 to 34 year olds. So if you're going after that younger demographic that uh, probably doesn't know how to manage their money, right? But <laughs> they're definitely on Snapchat with their 10 seconds or videos. And then the second largest uh, social media outlet and search engine is YouTube, with 1.9 billion monthly users. I, you know, I, I believe our CEO, Phil Long, always says, what is the biggest term searched? And it is how to. That phrase, when that phrase that starts out with how to, I, I just looked that up myself, uh, how to replace some headlights on my old truck and bought all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Kelly, did you want to throw in any 
Yeah, yeah. So this, all this data, it's great for small businesses um, and local businesses to look at to kind of assess what networks is the best option for your business, um, because that is really the second part that you need to look at besides your target market is which network should you be focusing your um, advertising efforts on. Yes. And when you gather all this data and, and you can have it at your disposal so you can have these insights, you can really become very effective with your marketing strategy. And the first one of the five categories that we, we talked about was the social media ads. And, and Kenley, being our social media manager, she is an expert in, in creating and really targeting the correct audience on social media. So I'm a wade in the back a little bit and let her take it over with the social media ads. Awesome. So let's dive into social media ads. So this is probably one of the most popular um, online advertising avenues that businesses use. So here, um, what you see here is um, how you get to the advertising platform from your business page. Now I do want um, to let everyone know that there is a difference between a Facebook ads manager ad, um, which is very, very detailed and that is a, takes a lot of time to learn, but there actually is way, um, way more options for small businesses, for businesses that maybe want to start learning how to advertise themselves. So here you can see all the different types of options you have when you pick um, your advertisement. So you have a boosted post, which is normally a great option for businesses to use when they want to maybe increase engagement. So they want to get people to like their post um, or comment on it or share it. You can even boost an event. So for example, um, this is how we promote the webinar and our luncheons, any event we use, this is how um, we promote it. So after you create your event on Facebook, you can use it, um, you can use this platform to boost your event to reach a wider audience. You can also use the get more leads option. This is a really great option for people mm -hmm. who have, let's say they have a newsletter they wanna send out, um, or they have a product that they want people to call about. You can actually create a leads form asking for people's um, phone number or their email and then you can reach out to them. So it's great for the businesses who really want to develop a relationship with their client. And then also there is the get more messages. So a lot of businesses rely heavily on um, Facebook Messenger and Instagram. People constantly DM them as most say, or message the pages. So this is a great option because people will be able just to click on your ad and go right to Facebook Messenger to send you a message. You can also promote your page, which is a lot um, very similar to the Boost post. Um, promoting your page would be really great for businesses that are um, just starting out with social media. So if you're trying to grow your, um, your followers on social media, on your Facebook and Instagram, it's a great option for those businesses. It's definitely one of the first types of social media ads I suggest because you want to grow those followers. Um, and then also, and Kelly, yeah, let, let's hang there for a minute. When you were yeah. talking about promoting your page, letting that be the first, is that because of brand awareness? You want to really tout out your brand and who you are and get that out to people? Yes, yes, because there are so many, um, there are a few different types of avenues um, you want to reach with social media ads, whether it's getting leads, um, you just want to get people right into your business, you can use social media to increase your brain awareness, which is just what you were saying, just what Josh was saying, um, because in the end, you want people to remember your brand. Um, so with the social media ads, I've read a statistic that it takes someone six times to see a brand before it sticks in their head. Um, so promoting your page, um, using that 
objective um, or boosting a post is really great with that because it'll show those people your ad and they'll be able to remember it hopefully mm -hmm. and oh, also yeah. yes it's a great great way um, brand awareness is a huge a huge aspect of um, social media marketing and advertising on social media so also you can see um, you can promote your business locally so if you are a restaurant a store that just does in-store sales um, this is great because people will be able just to click right on the ad and it'll give them directions right to your location you can also um, get more people to contact you which kind of goes hands in ha hand in hand with the get more messages um, there's a call now button available as well with that type of um, social media ad and then um, one of my favorites is the get more website vis visitors so the objective um, this objective is great because most businesses not all but most businesses have a website where they want people to eventually land on to get detailed information about their business so this is a very, very effective way to, to drive your business's website yeah and when we talk about driving traffic to the business's website and, and knowing that target market, so in order to create the most effective social media ads, if you're already an existing business with a customer list, with using that list and uploading it, how does that work with social media? Yes. So this is something that's super great um, about social media advertising that a lot of people aren't aware of. So this is um, a part of the ads manager and anyone who has a business page has access to this um, but what you can do with facebook and um, instagram because they do work hand in hand because um, they are owned by the same people um, you can actually create a custom audience so we will talk this goes um, almost perfectly with remarketing um, which we will talk about um, later in the presentation but creating a custom audience you can actually use your website data um, you can set up a custom audience so Facebook will collect the data um, of the people that have visited your website which is insane and it's a great great tool that a lot of businesses aren't aware of um, you can actually upload a customer list which this is what Josh was talking about um, so if you are someone who uses email marketing, let's say that you uh, capture people's email after a sale. Um, if you're in the service industry, a lot of people, that's part of their closing sale of when they send an invoice. You can actually target that email list. You can upload it and then target those people, uh, which is an awesome, awesome way to reach people that you know are interested in your business so it's maybe more of a warm lead because you know that they um, they've given you their email they've used your business before so that is a really really cool addition to the custom audiences you can yeah. also you could use um, there's there are tons here but most of them are pretty self-explanatory but some of my favorites are the Facebook page so if you are someone that has over you know between a thousand to five thousand followers or even more than that you can target just people that follow you on your Facebook page uh, which is very neat and a very cool way to grab those people's attention while they're scrolling on social media and, and this is Facebook and Instagram that we're talking about particularly for here correct yes it sure is so this is this screen that you see here is what you will see on facebook okay and then next well, let's let's jump into the linkedin yes yep so linkedin it's very similar um in the aspect of the objectives that you are offered so you when you advertise on linkedin if you're looking to increase your brand awareness uh, there's an option for that if you want to just get website clicks um, and website people to visit your website that's also available as well and if you're wanting to generate just leads if you're wanting to get cold hard leads um, they also have a conversions objective that you can select which is very oh. awesome yes i know linkedin came up with 
quite a few updates and to be able to use these conversion leads and, and website visits on LinkedIn for, for those who are definitely uh, commercial, a B2B, more B2B, you know, you're targeting other businesses for your business. LinkedIn is an awesome tool to use. And then yes. you know, here's one that I, I think is my favorite, <laughs> but apparently more women use it than men. So <laughs> Pinterest. Hey, it's available for anybody. <laughs> they don't discriminate. So Pinterest um, is one of those social media channels that some people tend to forget about. Um, but like Josh said, it's very, it still is very popular and the engagement and the users have not declined. Um, so they actually offer their own social media ads through Pinterest. Um, and some industries that would really benefit from using um, advertisement on Pinterest would be, let's say you are a retail store. Um, anything that you offer when you create a pin, you can get them to come to your website. So if you are someone that has an e-commerce, this is a great, great tool um, because like we said, you know, people go to Pinterest because they want to be almost inspired. They're looking for clothing, let's say, some type of clothing. Um, also, real estate. If you're in the real estate industry, people come here for inspiration on home decor, um, maybe remodeling. So it's another, that's another great industry that could really benefit from Pinterest. Yeah, I would even say, um, when we talk, you said you mentioned home decor, like those when you have, we have a coastal home improvements and they, they come out and they put shutters and gutters and, and blinds and screens around porches. On Pinterest, you can find all kinds of different ideas for uh, at home projects or things you want to do. So even for the construction industry, Pinterest is still a very beneficial social media outlet. Yes, definitely. Yes. And then there's another form uh, that comes out of social media ads is the pay-per-click. And earlier I called it Google ads. Kelly, could you give us some insights on, you know, why I called it Google ads and this, and what exactly does it do to benefit businesses? Yes. So Google ads um, or pay-per-click is um, basically what you see here is what it is. So it is the ads that show up at the top of search engines on Google. For example, so you see here, um, whenever you look up basically anything, um, nowadays if you look up AC repair, if you look up um, sushi restaurants, for example, you are bound to see these ads. And everyone always wonders, what the heck are they? Um, how do you access them or how do you create them? Um, so what it is is it is a service that google offers and pay-per-click is a pretty great way to describe it every time someone clicks on these ads you are charged a certain amount um, so it really is based off of keywords um, in your keyword research which is what we um, do a lot of for our uh, Google ad clients it is a long process um, but we are going to give you a little insight into how the um, the process for Google ads works yes because because as we see here it says oil change mobile and by me simply typing in oil change mobile the first thing that I see are these two ads one for Mobile Chevrolet and, and then Take 5 oil change. So that's how those Google ads work. So as we go into the keyword research, which is the most crucial and beneficial uh, part, because if you don't know the right words to put in, then your, your investments are, are being squandered. So it's, Kelly, would you just tell us more about the keyword research and how that goes? Yes. So we're gonna just going to talk about it the broadest sense we can, um, because like I said, it is it can be very complicated. But to put it into simplest terms, um, the way that Google gives you a price for your um, your Google ads for your keywords um, is you use you can use the keyword planner. So, for example, here you see 
the location, we put Mobile County. Um, and then where the search is, we're going to use restaurants as an example. So when you look up restaurant, they actually give you towards the bottom, you can see these the three lists, um, they actually give you thousands normally um, ideas of keywords. Uh, they are their monthly searches. So you're able to see how many people are searching these words because that is something that you really want to pay attention to. You want to make sure that you're spending your money on keywords that are, are going to be highly searchable. People are constantly looking them up because no one wants to put money towards a keyword that only gets, let's say, five views um, or five searches a month. You can also see um, the competition level. And then over to the right, the important stuff is the average um, cost per keyword. So that is um, how much you will most likely be paying for each click. Now, um, for every industry, it's very different. People will spend about $1,000 a month on Google Ads up to 50,000, depending on what your budget is. Um, but we'll talk about budgets later, of course. But yes, Google Ads can be very beneficial for competitive markets. If you're in a real competitive market and you want people to click to your website or to, let's say you want to get leads off of Google um, and you want them to be, you know, quality leads, that Google Ads um, is a really good option for your business. So there's this Google Ads if you're doing the right keyword research, but what is the difference between Google Ads and local service ads? Yes, so local service ads is a new service that Google has started offering, I want to say the past year or two years. Um, they created this to kind of target smaller businesses that may not have such large um, budgets and this is really targeted towards the businesses that are in the service industry they go out and visit people's homes and um, what it is you can see here it actually appears above the Google Ads um, and all you all people do is they click on your name and they call you so you are actually only charged per phone call, which is completely different than the um, Google ads because that is per click on your website. So this has really nothing to do with your website. It's more about getting that direct lead and that direct phone call right from Google. And if they click on the number, are they calling them? Yes. So right when they click on your phone number, they um, the phone call will get placed right to the business and it'll tell you that this is a phone call from Google um, and then it would be carried on just like any normal um, sale you know, whatever industry you may be in now I'm seeing a, a check mark a green dot with a check mark and it says Google guarantee and this is something that we've talked about before um, so Ken would you just explain the Google guarantee and and how it co coexists with the local service ads? Yes. So Google Guarantee is the first process you have to go through, <clears throat> excuse me, to get, um, to be able to use the local service ads. So what Google Guarantee is, is it is basically a certification or a guarantee to your potential clients. Um, so what you have to do to be get Google guaranteed, um, you must be licensed and insured. So when Google created this program, one of the biggest things they wanted to eliminate was people using businesses on Google from Google that were not legitimate businesses. So when someone clicks on one of those local service ads, they know that they are, um, they know that they are in a, a legit licensed mm -hmm. insured company. Um, any and also another part of it is any um, any different industry 
that requires a degree or some type of certification will need to complete a background check. So most of the um, businesses that use it will have to have all of their field workers, since it really only, I think there's about 25 different industries that can use this. Um, so they will have to complete a background check and that is free right now. Um, I do see Google adding a fee for that in the future because this uh, local service as it's becoming so popular. And another thing to keep in mind is the Google guarantee and the local service ads do not affect your SEO at all, which is your organic search. It's completely separate. Mm -hmm. And I heard you, you mentioned that there's about 25 industries that are, that the local service ad is available to. And for those who are listening into this webinar, if you would like to know what those 25 are, just let us know and we'll get that list over to you. Yes. So with the local service ads and the Google guarantee, you know, we're, we're making a shift now into the remarketing that we've talked about earlier. And as we see here, we have a website and then we have a Facebook ad. So Kenley, could you give us some information on how remarketing works and what it is? Yes. So this is um, probably one of the types of online advertising that people really have no idea how it happens. Um, a lot of people <laughs> think, and, and I know it's true, but a lot of people think, oh my gosh, Google and they're stalking what I'm doing on the internet. Um, but actually, it is a service um, that many, many companies use and that we offer for clients um, and it is remarketing. So this is a great example. Right here you can see um, that we're on the website, we're looking at this pair of shoes and then we scroll over to Facebook and an ad for the same pair of shoes pops up. Um, which is crazy, uh, but so great because basically what it's doing is it's turning um, a warm lead, as I would like to say, into a hot lead um, because you're reminding them of the, the product that they were considering buying. And this is using that data that is you know, out there in the web of, of retargeting yes. and remarketing. So it, even from the customer list, if you have that customer that comes into your store and you know that they were, you know, interested in this particular item and then you target that list on Facebook and now you're remarketing right there to them. Oh, hey, mm -hmm. I had a, this list of customers. They're very interested in, in shoes or they're very interested in, for me, I like steaks. So, <laughs> you know, it's a <laughs> restaurant, I'm, I'm eating at a restaurant, some steaks, and now they're remarketing to me. Yes. Uh, you know, we, we say that thing of, I think my phone is to me or, or something's going on. And uh -huh. it's just the remarketing. Even, uh, Kim, I believe we once spoke about the, using the Google Analytics uh, data for mm -hmm. remarketing. Yeah, so, yeah, so, uh, like we talked about earlier with um, with all the different options for remarketing, this is a great example of website visitors. So basically what they're doing is they're able to, they plugged it into their custom audience, which we talked about earlier from their website, and then they're using that data and they have a specific ad. So um, big companies like this have remarketing happening probably every move that you make on their site. Most bigger companies do um, have that. I'm sure a lot of you have noticed when you go on Facebook and you are looking up comforters or um, some type of product, it normally pops up on your social media. So remarketing is really taking over um, social media and just online advertising in general. And that's that, that notion of that it usually takes about six times for somebody to see something before they're you know, they actually act on it or yes. buy. And with there's remarketing and then there's affiliate marketing. Now this is with with an influencer. So I'm I don't think I'm that much of an influencer, but <laughs> but Kelly, you want to give us insights on how affiliate marketing works. Yes. 
So affiliate marketing really has become super popular the last, I would say, two years. It has almost taken over the internet. Um, but to put it simply, affiliate marketing is the process of earning a commission with someone um, by promoting products. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're a business and you offer um, really a product or a service um, and you want to promote that with people that may already be established on social media or they may have a very successful website or blog that they use. That's a way um, to use them to drive people to you. So this is um, a great example. We're going to go over a couple examples of affiliate marketing. So right here we have a um, a blog. The Define Dish is a very successful. Uh, she's she is um, a cook. She has a cookbook, and here is a blog she wrote about a vitamin company. So she gives all of her feedback about it on her website, which um, she has probably 30, 300,000 viewers a month on her website. Um, and then you can see here on the bottom, she has a little snippet where it says sign up. Where the traffic is coming from and it may seem very technical um, but it's actually it's not too difficult to create those um, links to be able to track it but the vitamin company essentially is able to see wow we actually got you know 60 orders just from working with this um, blogger who has you know a ton of she has she has influence on people yes one avenue of using the affiliate marketing here's another one with this uh, facebook post mm -hmm. so this is an example of how affiliate marketing has impacted social media i'm sure a lot of you have seen a ton of ads for um home chef the food delivery there are affiliates and influencers that work with companies like that this is an example of fabletics um, so it's a facebook app just like we had talked about before um, so she's using social media to promote her um, affiliate link essentially so when people click that shop now button everyone is able to go right to the product but the company fabletics knows and is able to track who is going to that link and who is purchasing their products because of this affiliate essentially and i know these are bigger examples um, but i have seen smaller businesses um, boutiques for example that have done this and that work with um, smaller influencers you could say and it's extremely successful and it, affiliate marketing is um, really taking over online advertising nowadays yeah, and when you look on on facebook or on instagram and you see uh, someone that you know that has a, a large following even for down here in the gulf coast and they, they're touting this other business they're, they're advertising for this other business that is uh, affiliate marketing just just as these here so yes but you know a bigger question that comes across everybody's mind is how much should you spend and you know i i understand social media marketing is beneficial and in, in creating a website and and doing all this remarketing and google ads but i don't know what my investment should be and the question that I always pose is how much is each customer worth to you? How much are they valued to you? And once you figure out that number, I you, you should take 10 to 20%. I always stick with 20%, you know, of that. So if that customer is valued at $2,500, that one customer take 20% of that, which is 500 and then also calculate in a conversion rate because you know, you know out of every five people you're, you're bound to get one 
So that's another 20% when you go into how much should you spend. Um, because as we talk about social media ads and, and Google guarantee, Google ads and remarketing, you have to invest in your business and invest in your potential clients and your existing clients to bring them in and keep them hooked in. So if once you've done the calculations and you know your investment threshold, uh, then you know how to go forward with, okay, now I know how much I should be spending. Now I just got to design the content that I want to put out in front of my potential clients and customers. Yes. So here we have, um, this is a very important aspect to your social media advertising. So here we put a couple of different um, ads that we have created and um, worked on. So on the left, you can see this is an of, uh, event. So this is a Facebook ad that is to promote a webinar, which is what we're on right now. Um, you wanna make sure that you include some type of eye-catching wording in the caption. So here you see the first thing that we state is that it is a free webinar. Um, so right there you're able to catch people's eyes and that goes for any type of ad you run. Um, you don't want to have any, um, any description on your ad that may lie flat, that uh, that may not intrigue your customer because I mean in reality I think we our attention span is like four per four seconds or something like that so you want to grab their attention as quickly as possible and and using the psychology of, of marketing and the design of photos as I look at this first image here my attention goes straight to cares act because I know that's something that is you know forefront on my mind during this pandemic so that catches me so creating that content where something there's some kind of term even in the imagery that is going to catch them yes yes you want to make sure that you know the image represents what you are promoting um, on the right is a really good example of uh, an engagement type uh, ad so what we did with LA barbecue they're one of our clients we actually really their biggest um, their biggest need is just brand awareness and growing engagement of their business um, on social media. And so really there's so much that you can do with with even um, a smaller budget. You know, like we said, Google ads, a lot of times you do have to have a larger budget, but you can do so much on social media with a uh, with a more affordable budget, I guess you could say. And then, and uh, this go ahead. One here, for Suncoast Energy, this has a, a Facebook offer. Mm -hmm. Yes, so another great addition to Facebook, just, just really strictly Facebook, is you can actually promote an offer you have. And let's face it, um, people nowadays want to save money, um, if there's any coupons that you offer, uh, it is a great way to get people to come to your business. So Facebook actually has a offer ad that you can run. Um, and you want to make sure that the photo represents your business or what you are promoting. And when people click on that get offer, they actually get reminded that they have an offer on Facebook. So it's a great way to bring in um, potential customers or clients because people love to save money. They do. Um, and it doesn't have to be a huge offer, um, but making sure that you're very clear um, and concise in the way that you describe your offer in the uh, content and in the description is very important. But when done properly, it is extremely effective for businesses. That, yeah, that is so correct, Kenley. So as we have this webinar, we're offering as well a free digital marketing review, which includes website and social media uh, 
a review and competitive SEO analysis. During this review, we want to sit down with you and go over your digital marketing strategy. And we want to show you the keywords that are coming up for your business and keywords that you probably should use. And also we want to go over, okay, well, how has your social media campaign been going? What, how's the traffic been flowing back and forth from, from Google to social media to your website? And like I said, this is free. We want to offer this to our, our fellow businesses in the Gulf Coast because we care deeply about our businesses here and we want to see everyone prosper. It is competitive market, but we want to make sure everybody prospers. And once again, this is free. So for those of you who would like to uh, partake into this free digital marketing review. Even if you've been, uh, you sat down with us before, there are new insights, there's new tips, there's new services, uh, uh, updates that have been done with social media and websites and Google that we want to make sure that you're in the forefront of. So you just let us know if you want one of these free digital marketing reviews. I believe there's a survey that's going to go out. And, and we'll get that information back and I'll be right in contact with you or one of it was me or Ken Lee because, you know, we love you. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, you know, it is free for you to attend this webinar and that digital marketing review is free. I hope everyone's catching on the big turn right <laughs> here. This is our example of trying to show you, you know, having that imagery with the excitement and then having that word free down there. You know, it is we truly care about your business and all businesses along the Gulf Coast. But now if you do want one of these marketing reviews, we're offering, we're making this offer all the way till uh, June the 5th. Oh my goodness. It's June already. Oh, <laughs> but we are, this is all, this is available all the way to June the 5th. You just have to book, you know, schedule the time, that you have available in your calendar. We know you're busy. We, you know, we, we're doing this via phone, via Zoom, or if you, you know, if you're like me and you like being in person, we, we can do it in person with social distancing. Be safe <laughs> and not sorry. But all you have to do is email us at events at askbis.com. Again, it's email us at askbis.com for that free digital marketing review and. We really want to sit down, and if you don't know what your budget should be for for your digital marketing, if you don't know how to do a Facebook offer, if you want to learn more about affiliate marketing or remarketing, this is the perfect time because right now, as we get back to a new normal, uh, we want to make sure that we're helping you capture more of the market than what you had before. So, Kelly, did you want to say anything before we... Yes, Does, if anybody has any questions, we will um, pause a minute and you guys can put them in the chat box in the top right corner and we would love to answer any questions that we can while you guys are here. Yeah, so this is Christy here. I'm going to go ahead and unmute everybody. So if you want, you can either keep yourself muted, you can ask some questions. We did have some questions come in. One of them is, how many times would you boost a post in a month? Yes, so I would, I always tell people, depending on what you're wanting to promote, kind of depends on how many times you should do it. Um, so if you're just wanting to kind of grow your Facebook page and maybe increase your engagement, um, for a lot of our clients, I will boost their posts twice a month. So it's different, fresh content. Um, but I would say, you know, two times a month is definitely enough, depending on what your uh, main objective is and what you're wanting to do with the um, Facebook post. Because you can also track, you know, you can set it how long you want that boost to post to run, correct, Kenley? Yes, yeah, you can do, um, I think, a minimum of five days all the way up to, you know, 30 days if you'd like. Okay. Uh, we had another post um, question come in. How do you do marketing ad? Yes. So, whenever you set up remarketing ads um, in your ads manager, which you can access through your um, business profile, through your ads manager, you can actually pause 
any type of ad, not um, just remarketing ads, but you can pause any ad. You can um, go in there and you can actually completely stop it from running. Um, but whenever you create it, you do get the option of how long um, you want it to run and what date you want it to run till. But you have full control over how much money is spent, um, when you stop it through that ads manager, you can pause or turn off an ad at any time. Um, I also think you're wondering like, how do you stop businesses from remarketing to you? Is there a way to turn that off? Oh, but how to turn off remarketing ads? There is not. Um, you can. You can go on, um, if you see an ad that maybe you don't like, you can, uh, I think you can report it, but that is that is one big, I mean, upside for people that are using remarketing, but a downside for people is you, there really is no way to um, kind of turn that off on your social media channels. Okay, and then there was another one. Um, what channels do you suggest a retail business produce ads for? Yes. Did you say, um, can you repeat that really quick? You cut out. I'm sorry. What social media channels should you use to boost your retail? If you're retail? Yes. Okay. So I would say um, Facebook is huge depending on what your target market is. If you are targeting um, maybe 18 to 30 year olds, definitely make sure that you are um, using Instagram as well. So I would say Facebook and Instagram are two huge ones and they actually um, work together. So it's almost like a two for one with uh, Facebook and Instagram. Hey guys, I think that's all the questions we have. Great. Okay. Well, once again, we thank everyone for joining in with us today on this webinar, and we hope that we've given you some information and, and really helped you out uh, with what you have going on today. And like I said, if you have any more questions or anything, or if you like that free marketing review, um, just email us at events at askbis.com. We'll be with you as soon as possible. We're pretty quick with response. <laughs> But once again, thank you all for joining us. We hope you have a wonderful day and please do stay healthy and stay safe. Thank you everyone. Have a great day.